live on Twitch. Say 280. Move that camera down a little bit. Yeah, that'll work. Move my lime packets out of the way. Okay, are we, are we live? Are we? We are live. I'm checking audio. Testing, testing. Yep. We are good. Okay, let's do this. You ready? Yep. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 280 of the Security Podcast here in the In30 Network. My name is Hiam. Tom is there, there, there after our week off, which wasn't really a week off because life happened. And when I say life, Log4J version two, did I say that right? Uh, Log4J no, V2, Log4J. Yeah, just, just Log4J. Or is it Log4J, as I saw on... Uh, Somebody saying on the memes. It's really more like um, log your hours appropriately so you can get paid over time for dealing with this. Okay, so so somebody posted this in our security group, which, by the way, still exists, still on Signal. Uh, find us on Twitter, at In30. Spell it all out. Ask us. We'll get you in. Um, and for the first time in my life, I, I, I just told Tom, I just didn't care. I mean, I'm a school teacher. I teach Java. I mean, do I have to worry about this? Maybe. I actually looked forward to Tom explaining this to me about 15 minutes ago. And I'm like, this is really bad. Like, yeah, like really, really bad. But the good news is I don't have to worry about it for the first time in my life. And, uh, and chances are, uh, for you at home, if you're wondering, hey, what do I do? Uh, I'm, I'm freaking out over here. Everything is getting hacked left and right. What should I do to protect me and my family and loved ones? Um, and uh, thankfully, the, the common advice we always give is applicable here. Uh, patch early and patch often. Um, I, I am going to say this one bit before we get too far into the technical weeds. Um, so chances are, unless you are home growing a, a Java application, or, or administering a Java application that uses log4j as your main logging library, you don't have to really worry about this, with one exception. Um, if you have Minecraft installed on your system, uh, make sure you are running at least version 1.18.1. .1. That is 1.18.1 .1 and nothing older than that. Um, Minecraft itself is susceptible to log4j. If you're just playing Minecraft offline on your computer with an old version, it doesn't really matter. But if you do anything online with it, uh, especially like if you connect to servers or play multiplayer, uh, or especially if you're running a Minecraft server, you gotta make sure you're on version 1.18.1 .1 or later. Uh, because yeah, that is vulnerable and it can, it can cause some badness if you don't patch it. So, um, that's your PSA for this episode. Uh, the rest is going to be gory technical details. So are, are you ready for the gory technical details? Because you're on. Uh, I think I am. I think so. Um, I just explained it to you very, very poorly. <laughs> um, so I mean, I, under, I mean, look, I understood it. Um, and look, I did no research on it. I, I, I listened to somebody talk. I heard, I heard the words LDAP. I heard closing brackets. I heard exfiltrate data. And I said, okay, this is bad because when you exfiltrate data, but I didn't know how far it went. So it is bad. But like I said, it, it, I, I mean, I, I'm not, I can't do anything to fix or help or do anything. So I let it go. Yeah, this, uh, as far as security, uh, security vulnerabilities go, this is kind of the worst of the worst case scenario. Um, maybe not the absolute was, worst, but really, really high up there. They rated it a 10 out of 10. I think it's the first 10 yeah. out of 10 security it's not, vulnerability. It's not the first, but among the 10 out of 10s, this is even bad amongst those. Um, this is a uh, completely hands-off remote code execution vulnerability, um, which means that an attacker, if they want can leverage this vulnerability to make your system do 
quite literally whatever they want. Um, it's it's exactly the hacking you see in movies where oh I've I've got his toaster now now I'm gonna burn down his house it's, it's stuff like that like the absolute worst of the worst type of hacks out. Um, so let's get to why this is such a big deal, how it happened, um, and you know kind of what the industry has been doing about it. Uh, I apologize. I'm a little bit sleep deprived uh, because if you work, especially as a programmer in the tech industry, it's it's been a bad week. It's been a really, really bad week. Um, so uh, originally this came out and, and usually these big vulnerabilities have responsible or coordinated disclosure, whatever you want to use your terminology as, um, where... You know, a security researcher will work with people, uh, you know, will work with, in this case, the Apache Foundation and, you know, coordinate a patch and coordinate, uh, like, releases and disclosure of information and all that stuff. Um, this one was found in the wild. So this is quite literally a zero day. Like, no one knew this vulnerability existed, or at least nobody publicly acknowledged this vulnerability existed. And then it was on the map instantly. Uh, and the reason is because... Um, Minecraft, <laughs> strangely enough. Uh, so people, people love video games. People love Minecraft. Uh, and even more than video games, people love hacking video games, especially multiplayer video games. They love creating hacks and cheats and everything else. Um, this was actually being exploited on public Minecraft servers, <laughs> amazingly enough. Uh, and then somebody noticed this and they said, huh. This looks like it could be a serious security vulnerability. Oh no, what happened? This is a huge, massive security vulnerability for literally anything using the Log4j library. But what is Log4j? Uh, Log4j is a library, um, and we'll get to what that is. Basically, there's the Java programming language, um, and then uh, every programming language has these things called libraries. So you can create little packages of code to help out your fellow programmers or save yourself some time. Like if you were doing something like logging user information, right? Like, hey, Bob logged in at this timestamp from this machine. Well, you don't want to like write that line out a hundred times or make a function that would do that kind of logging, you know, in all of the many applications you have to write throughout the day. So you take that little bit of logging code and you put it in a library and then anything else can just grab that library, package it into their application, and use that code. They're like helpful little programming shortcuts. Um, so we've, we've referred to a lot of different libraries across the history of this show. Uh, Log4j is the most popular Java logging library out there, and it's used just about everywhere. If you're using Java in a professional sense, chances are you're using Log4j somewhere. Um, so... What this means is that any shop that's using Java was impacted by this vulnerability, which there are a ton of them. Um, I don't want to name names, but if you can think of a household tech company that anyone knows, uh, maybe people that make phones, maybe people that make search engines, maybe people that do e-commerce or uh, sell video games online. Um, those places, yeah, they, they were impacted. And I say were because a lot of programmers, including myself, have had a lot of late nights recently trying to patch this thing and fix it up. Uh, it hasn't been great. So if you see a programmer or a security person in your life, give them like an, an extra tight hug this Christmas. They need it. It's been kind of a week. Um, so this logging library, just about everywhere. It is a super bad vulnerability. It is impacted everywhere. But what what is the vulnerability? How did how does a logging library uh, like reach out and get remote code execution? Like it doesn't really make sense. It's just literally slapping down text into a text file that an admin can look at later, either for you know checking application status or alerting on weird conditions or diagnosing crashes. Right? It's it's literally just supposed to slap text down into a file. Well, that's where JNDI comes from. Um, so JNDI is basically a, a Java way, and I, I apologize, I'm not a Java programmer. I'm a Go programmer mostly today. Uh, but it's basically a way for um, Java to look up where a piece of code is or look up where an object is um, and go and grab that thing for you. Um, it's 
nice if you wanted to do something like, you know, log somebody's name um, instead of logging a username. You can just say, hey, look up this LDAP stack here. And LDAP is a basically a people directory. Um, look up this, uh, this LDAP host here. Look up Bob's username and then put Bob's whole name right here on, on the front page that we're rendering. Um, it, it's kind of a nice little shortcut. Unfortunately, it turns out to be super dangerous um, if used incorrectly. And yeah, Log4j was using it incorrectly. What this means to a hacker is that they can throw in this, basically this JNDI path um, into any field that will be logged by the application. Um, and that field is then evaluated. Even if that server is remote, it will grab whatever information from that remote server, take it back, and then unpack it, basically deserialize a Java object, which allows it to run code from the attacker, from wherever it grabbed it from. So what this means is that if you log in, and this is, this is going to be a bad example, but if you log, go to like iCloud, for instance, uh, and yes, iCloud was one of the things impacted. And you try to log in with like, you know, JNDI evil server slash exploit. Well, what iCloud's backend servers will do, you know, like behind the firewall is the actual things running the iCloud login application. It'll take whatever like evil host is, it'll grab that exploit package and open it up and run it. And that's what Log4j is doing here. It is literally doing remote code execution. Grab code from a remote location and you run it. Now, this can be super dangerous because, you know, in kind of the best case, somebody runs a cryptocurrency miner on your host. Well, now all of your backend login hosts uh, are now mining cryptocurrency for some random person. Um, it can also be super dangerous just saying, hey, uh, you know, if the code says, hey, just shut down. Well, now all of your stuff is shut down, right? But those are like the nice cases. The bad ones are, you know, putting in crypto ransomware, which we have now seen this leveraged into crypto ransomware attacks on various servers. Uh, and trust me, if there's one thing you don't want ransomware, it's your main application servers, because uh, that's going to that's going to cause some impact. Um, people have successfully leveraged this to exfiltrate data. So the, the way the actual string is formatted, there's a curly brace at the front and a curly brace at the end. And someone discovered, hey, if you just leave off the curly brace at the end and you have like myserver.net slash and then just no closing curly brace, literally everything the application would log from that point on is just sent to your server in a GET request. It, you quite literally are just grabbing all of the log information from a random server you don't control that you have attacked, and it's just sending you a bunch of data back. So hopefully you're not logging anything that's super sensitive because an attacker can totally grab all of it. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is horrifying. Uh, this is, I, I would estimate, this is the biggest vulnerability, the biggest software vulner vulnerability we have seen since Heartbleed. Like this is this is like a once in a decade type exploit. Um, the good news is you at home probably don't have to do too much except, hey, make sure your Minecraft is patched and run your updates. Um, but yeah, if if you're you know seeing a little bit less responsiveness in various companies you work with uh, or um, if, if you notice that, hey, your you know, nephew who works IT for a company is working an awful lot of late nights. This is kind of why. Well, what are they doing? I mean, so I understand the exploit. W what are they doing? Because it sounds, so what they have to do is they're, ha they're having to update these systems, right? Yep. They, they quite literally just have to do what I tell all of you to do at home. So there is uh, new versions of the Log4j library across you know, all of the supported versions um, that now have patches, which means... We have to download a library. We have to make sure it's compatible with systems. We have to, um, security personnel have to do a lot of testing to make sure that they can't break the new versions, that the patches are actually solid and good. Um, and then we have to rebuild and redeploy these applications with this new library, um, which okay. doesn't sound bad. Like if, if you have one application, 
that uses log for j cool patch the one application you're you're done at that point make sure you're not compromised but you're basically done but if you're a huge tech company with a bunch of different java applications like let's say 10,000 20,000 which honestly isn't an exaggerated number uh at all uh in in, in some cases then yeah you're quite literally working 24 7 around the clock to try to patch all of these things before you get popped and so th does uh, can an average person do this like can you hire a whole bunch of java temp workers to do this uh yeah very possibly um i mean like is, can you train me in like an hour to just hit a pseudo dot up pseudo update on all the systems <laughs> uh i, mean, I wish it not, were but... i wish it were one command it's it's more like programming where you're saying you know hey if you have a dependency management system you just say hey don't use this version use the updated one rebuild and deploy uh like if you've got a really nice continuous integration continuous uh deployment ci cd system yeah this could be easier uh still time consuming but easier um but yeah this is the kind of thing where you can just throw hands at it but it is still programming in a way and the unfortunate thing is if you are already in the business of developing software um your your business domain like the the problem domain is already kind of specialized right it might not be an off-the-shelf sort of thing where you can just hand somebody a run book and say yeah, type these things and hit go um because if it were that easy we could just automate this problem um, and a lot of businesses don't have people that can do that, right? A lot of businesses sometimes will hire contractors to come in, build an application, and then leave when it's done, right? And the business just runs on that thing for 10 years. Um, I've seen that a lot with contracted out programmers. So now you have to figure out, okay, can we hire that company again? Do those people even know where that is? Some companies, they have applications that are running that they don't have the source code to. And and there are ways to kind of unpack Java jar files and, and you know shunt things and, and throw them in the box and you know repackage the jars and run it. But that's also kind of specialized information, uh, kind of a specialized technique. So if you don't know Java, if you're not a Java programmer, if you're just a a person who runs a business that happens to run a Java application that you got developed ten years ago, well, this could be real trouble for. Um, we're we're going to see a, a whole lot of security companies make a whole lot of money by running around places and trying to find unpatched log for j and offering services for for contracts, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, it is definitely worse to leave this stuff out in the open. Um, on that though, there are some helpful people. I'm going to say, don't rely on this. Please don't, uh, because the odds are not in your favor. Um, there are some people who are exploiting this log4j vulnerability to immunize against the log4j vulnerability. So we talked years and years ago about um, a rogue vigilante hacker who was hacking consumer routers over the internet specifically to plug the hole that was hacked that that enabled these routers to get hacked in the first place. There are people out there who are actively exploiting log4j to patch log4j. Um, now, it's not permanent. When the application restarts, the vulnerability resurfaces. Uh, but chances are you're not going to get hit by the nice person who's trying to vaccinate you against your will. Uh, you're going to get hit by the person trying to mine cryptocurrency or exfiltrate data from your company. Uh, so don't rely on those people. Just know that not everyone who is exploiting this is a bad person. Um, just I, I would argue most of them are. I mean, so, yeah, we're talking about people fixing these things. I'm just, I, again, I just sit here and I'm looking like, okay, how long was this? How the, You said this library started from the beginning. So, like, 1994, this library was there. Uh, and, I mean. Log4j. Um, Log4j is old. I don't know if it's 1994 old, but it's it's old. This particular vulnerability, if I remember correctly, and, and I could be wrong here, uh, has been present for the past seven years. So it is, um, 
It's got a very, very long tail, and a lot of old stuff needs to get patched. And in some cases, uh, you can't. Like, imagine if you bought an appliance, right? You bought a blinky box that does something, but it happens to run Java somewhere and happens to have Log4j in it. If if that company went under, right? If if this uh, let's let's just call it a cable box, right? If this cable box is running Java um, and it hasn't been updated in forever, and the vendor went out of business, like what are you gonna do? It's 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 trash, right? Unless you want something that is potentially exploitable, then yeah. Uh, and if if you're thinking ah, it's fine, just it's behind the firewall, it's behind our router, no big deal. The issue is that. Because this is a logging library, you log a whole lot of things, and especially if it interacts with the internet at all. Um, yeah, this string could be anywhere. It could be a username. It could be an update. It could be uh, a get request with it in there. It, it could be quite literally anything. You would either have to sanitize everything at the edge, which isn't even guaranteed to, to solve this, because you can encrypt things. Um, or um, you have to remove it from the network entirely. So the reason why this is such a big deal is because it takes an attacker from outside the firewall, right? So here's, here's your firewall, takes your attacker from right here, and all they have to do is throw a string that goes through, um, and they're in your backend. They're automatically on the box inside your firewall, and they can do quite literally whatever the Java programming language will allow them to do, which is quite literally anything. It's a general purpose programming language. You can build anything out of Java, just like you can build anything out of C or Ruby or Go or what have you. Uh, so remote code execution, yeah, it's kind of a big deal. Uh, and this one is supremely and trivially exploitable. Um, so now, if... I was going to say, you, we're talking now about botnets. Yeah. Or are we coming full circle? So now the next thing is the botnets are going to come out and take other stuff down. Yeah. And you did say correctly of of uh, they're going crypto ransomware. Uh, your systems are going to be encrypted. I mean, not to be mean, but I don't think I don't think you're making money from botnets. I think you're exactly right. You're encrypting systems and then charging ransom for it. Yeah. Like why do the work with the bots when you can just lock the stuff up and have them pay for it? Yeah, this is um, this is going to cause a lot of issues down the road um, because we're we're going to find old devices uh, in in companies where they had no idea it was vulnerable in the first place. It's it's not like it's got you know a big flashing red light on the front of it. These systems have been running for a long time, and they will continue to run presumably for a long time with this vulnerability active. Um, this is uh, this is going to turn into uh, one of those hacks where every hacker just has it in like the first couple pages of their playbook, right? Um, so if you go to a capture the flag event, right, and you, your job is to hack uh, in a you know totally legal sanctioned competition, hack the stuff, get the flags, get points, get on the leaderboard, um, right? Everyone who does CTFs understands the old school Windows XP hacks, right? We don't see much Windows XP today. Um, but we frankly see more of it than we should. Uh, yeah, Windows XP is trivial to pop today. Um, this Log4j hack gets on those front pages. This is going to be one of the mainstays. Um, now, you know, the, the good news, I guess the good news for you at home is there's, there's not a ton you can do except for running your updates. Um, but yeah, if, if you see some weirdness or you hear about this on the news, this is kind of a big deal. Um, I said it before and I'll say it again. This is kind of a, a once in a decade hack, right? Do I, do I think the internet is on fire and everything's going to break and we're all going to die? No, no, absolutely not. Don't, I, I don't want to be super alarmist here. It's a really bad security vulnerability affecting just about everything out there that uses Java. Um, but it's not the end of the world and there are patches available. And the most critical systems are getting the most care. Um, I, I can tell you, I personally know all of my programmer friends and the vast majority of them. Yeah, they're, they've been working a lot of late nights and a lot of weird hours to get the stuff fixed and they're doing it. I'm guessing the problem is, is that we know it's so bad, so people are going to fix it right away. But until it does, 
systems are going to get exploited. Like, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is if you put an unpatched system right now, Windows 7, Windows XP on the internet, in, in 10 minutes, it'll be completely infected with just worms that are just being sprayed everywhere. Does this get to be to the point where they're just going to spray this everywhere and hope that something hits? Or it's is already it like, there. It's, oh, so at some point, so instead of at some point, we're going to, we're going to, it's not going to be an exploit Wednesday. We got the exploit. We know what it is. We only have a, a limited amount of time to do it and this time next year it's not going to be there and you're saying no it's just going to be added to the toolkit of just spray this on the internet and once you get hit you get it yeah there there are so. security researchers out there running honeypot networks specifically to analyze this kind of spray and pray uh exploit traffic um yeah they're seeing hundreds uh thousands of exploit attempts per second uh on things that they think are vulnerable um, so yeah, we're, this is going to be around for a little while. Um, I, the big things are going to get patched very quickly. Um, right. The, all the big internet, uh, internet providers, tech companies, um, Minecraft, um, it's all getting patched. Uh, it'll be patched very quickly. Uh, there'll be updates out. Um, and chances are if you're using one of these online service providers, right, we use iCloud as an example. Well, guess what? Apple patched, right? Now, is that saying that 100% of Apple is completely safe? Maybe. Maybe not, though. And that's the dangerous part about this update and, uh, or the, this exploit and the, the dangerous part about just the pervasiveness of Log4j and the pervasiveness of this vulnerability is that you, you kind of you don't know unless you've got really, really tight software accounting principles where you know every piece of software and every version of every library that's running throughout your entire company all the time to the second. Yeah. You could have some skeletons in the closet that you just don't know about. Um, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to see some of this stuff pop up in the future where someone's like, Oh yeah, we're totally patched. Ah, we forgot the super old application that was sitting back there in the closet that we never check. Um, so yeah, this is going to end up like that windows XP box that gets popped within 10 minutes. I'm just afraid, like you said, you have to go through all your software. If you don't find the piece of software, does it propagate again through the company or is it just that piece of software? Like it's not a worm. It's just a vulnerability. It's a vulnerability that could be worm. That's the other thing is that, yeah, because you can, you can craft an exploit that says, Hey, go try to find other things on your local network segment and exploit those. It's lateral movement through a network. So yeah, you could write an exploit that tries to exploit other systems with the exploit that tries to exploit other systems through the exploit. And, and it just, it just keeps going. Like you could absolutely worm this. And that's really, really terrifying. We're just going to see every exploit on Tuesdays being exploited on Wednesdays. Now that they can send these commands. Yeah. So, okay. Look, it's, it's again, I thank you for this because I had no idea what it was. I was like, let me just wait. The other good part is for the end user, there's nothing really you can do other, like you said, than keep updated. And it's just the people who are working are not going to have a good few weeks. And hopefully that's all it is. Hopefully it is another few weeks of working on this. And hopefully there's no like derivative or I don't want to say variant, but variant of this. And hopefully it's quiet in the new year because I mean, we are going to get more issues, but let's, this is a big deal and yeah. it's going to be a big deal for a while. And where we said, Oh, the exchange server email issue. That's a big deal. No, no, this is a bigger deal, but they're all big deals. And that's the problem. We have to stay vigilant on all of this. So I, I would uh, like to personally apologize um, to the entire tech community at large, uh, because when you and I said, man, it's been a slow news week. The only thing we got is like ransomware and, and, and crypto locker stuff. We're just like, we're done talking about that stuff. I, it's been a really slow news year. We, uh, we're waiting for the next thing to report on. Yeah, I, I kind of think it's our fault. We kind of jinxed it. So I was going to say that last Sorry. week. I was going to say, say yeah. this comes out and we're like, well, we said we, we, we want some news. We didn't want this. Yeah, no, no, we wanted, not, not like this. <laughs> we wanted just a little news, like, just like some small remote news. Code yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I will say it again. Fixed. If you're playing Minecraft, especially if you're playing Minecraft online, version 1.18.1, 1. 
Thankfully, uh, a week before this vulnerability happened, I actually shut down my public Minecraft server. So, uh, dodge that bullet. Um, update your Minecraft. And all the servers in the closet. So, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, we're just about done. So, let's. I'm going to say bye. We'll see everyone. I don't know if we'll see everyone next week, but we are going into the holiday, Christmas, and then New Year's and everything else. But hopefully, we'll be back next week to wish everyone a happy New Year. And hopefully, 2022 brings less crypto ransomware, more more awesome news. And I'll just end with, please, if you want to join our Signal group, please join it. You can ask all these questions later, and we can explain in greater detail. Anyway, with that said, have a good night, everyone, and we will hopefully see you next week. Bye, everyone. See ya. And save. And it is saved. Let me shut down Twitch.